I got to stand up anyway. Oh, okay. To the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Trustee Molinsky. Here. Trustee Trombley. Here. Trustee Trombley. Here. Trustee Gary. Here. Mayor Patrick. Here. Approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. Mm -hmm. And a second. That is any corrections, discussions. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We also have a, have a special board meeting on June 26th. We will uh, motion for that. We will move to approve those minutes. And a second. Second. Mm -hmm. any, any discussion? All, right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Mm -hmm. Opposed? Abstain? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Motion carries. Presentations of petitions, communications, and general question period for members of the community. Yes, there is no one from the community here, but we can table that. Um, I told uh, Matt that I would move his presentation up, so if you don't mind us doing that now, so he can get on the road. Mm -hmm. He um, did bring some information for us. Now I'll just turn it over to you. Uh, good to see everybody in person. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to just run through a um, quick discussion of the uh, studies that we have in progress. So we have the study at the sewer plant, primarily around the disinfection, but we're also providing you with a uh, long-term capital improvement plan as part of that study. Um, and then also the water main replacement study that we're working on. So starting with the disinfection, um, you know, as you know, you're awarded an EPG grant um, in December, and we provided the supporting documents. And just recently, you received the first 50% of your grant. I have pending on there, but it has arrived. Um, and then you'll get the final 50% of that grant once we finish the report, submit it to DEC, and they. Amy, do you have that? It's just a outline. Yep. Um, once they approve our engineering report, the PER is the preliminary engineering report, if they approve that, they'll release the final 50% of the grant. So we are in the midst of drafting the engineering report, um, and we expect to have a draft for you before the end of July to take a look at, and have the final in August, and at that time we'll submit it to DEC. So at this point, I don't have a project scope for you, which that's still coming together in the report. Um, but again, it's going to start with a base of doing the disinfection, because that is a mandate by the state. Now, how will you fund this project? Well, the disinfection itself, that part of whatever project we uh, compile, will be 80% uh, covered by a WQIP grant. It's a water quality improvements project. So just a little bit of background. The state has been issuing these disinfection requirement letters for about uh, five or six years. And they started off the first few years um, with their highest priority treatment plants. So the ones that were discharging to class A water bodies, so their highest priority ones. This many. Yeah, that's better. Um, and then they would only issue as many letters as they had grant money available to the communities they were sending the letters to. That was the case for the first three or four years at least that they've been issuing the disinfection mandate. Since then, they made a clean sweep of all remaining treatment plans with the mandate letter. So you were one of those last two years that got cleaned up with all the remaining treatment plants across the state that had to meet that requirement. Now, what happened is that resulted in many more projects than what they had grant money to fund. So now they've got a bit of a log jam in that program. 
Last year was the first year I've seen any applicants um, turned down or not receiving the grant to complete their disinfection project. Talking with DEC, they said, you know, we'll get through it. You know, we've given these communities five years to comply. There's no award for getting done early, so be patient, we'll get you through this. In fact, they talked about making disinfection projects a little bit higher priority than the other treatment plant projects just to get those projects through the program, get them taken care of so they can all meet their compliance deadlines. The uh, remaining portion of the disinfection project and perhaps other portions you may choose to do at this time that we identified in our report um, can be financed through EFC. We believe you'd qualify for hardship. That won't be determined until we submit a formal application to EFC, but their hardship um, would allow for you to uh, qualify for a 0% loan for anything that's not grant covered. Um, if there are other plant upgrades identified not related to disinfection, like I said, they cannot be covered by the WQIP grant that's meant for disinfection. There is another grant out there, um, the WIA grant, it's an acronym W-I-I-A, it's the Water Infrastructure Improvements Act grant. It's a 25% grant for sewer projects that would help offset that cost. But again, I can't have a very specific conversation with you tonight about what the costs are because we haven't wrapped up the report. So what we'd like to do when we wrap up the report and we have uh, long-term capital improvements spelled out, you may look at that and say, we're willing to tackle this much of the plant improvements right now. The others we're going to defer to a later date, depending on, you know, what your grant likelihood is, what the user cost impacts might be from taking those on, and what Mike might say about how urgent some of those are or how many of those could wait five or ten years. So. You know, we'll have a more specific conversation about that once we have the draft report and we can go over that with you perhaps next month. So I would see a schedule for this, uh, you know, probably your funding picture coming together spring of 2021. Um, unless we go after a WIA grant, that would probably happen in the summer of 2021, which might push off your funding determination to later in 2021, like December. We would do the design over that winter of 2021 to 2022 and we would expect construction in 2022. Your compliance deadline is to have that disinfection system operating by spring of 2023. So again, I'd like to be able to go over more specifics with you on cost next month, but this is just kind of a framework of the steps that lie ahead. There's no action items for you to take at this time. Um, next month you might have to make some decisions on what scope of project you'd like to tackle initially. Um, so that you know we can submit that for funding applications. And moving on to the water main replacement, uh, we're a little bit further ahead on this engineering report. Um, it's a little more simple versus uh, a lot of the facets that are involved with the wastewater treatment plant. So as you know, again, just recapping, you've got a rural development grant to cover the study cost that was awarded back in April maybe, March or April. Mm -hmm. um, so since then, we've been working on the preliminary engineering report. Now, I've got some supplemental sheets here to go over with you. Uh, might as well jump into those at this point. Um, because I've identified the project budget here of 1.1 million plus alternates. So you'll find two things in front of you, a, a map of the village and this set of tables that has project costs and some funding scenarios. So there's a, there's a lot of different scenarios on this um, set of tables. So there's three tables on here. The top table is replacing only the water main. So these three tables represent three different scopes of work for the project. Okay, One is only replacing the water mains. 
and then reconnecting the water laterals to the new mains, but the existing water lateral. The second is replacing the main and replacing the water laterals from the main out to the street right away. So that way, everything within the village street right away is new. And then you would splice back into their existing water lateral at that right away line. And then the third is replacing the water main and the water laterals all the way from the main to the house, all the way turnkey to their house. So we just kind of want to represent these three scopes for your consideration. Um, you know, we, I talked with Mike about it earlier. Um, he didn't think it would. Um, he probably would want to do from the main all the way to the house, um, even to the right-of-way line. I guess was still something you'd want to think about. But you know, most of them are near side laterals, meaning the the homes are on the same side as the the water main itself. So probably just reconnecting those to the main. Uh, you did identify one opposite side lateral that you had a lot of freezing problems with. That one in particular might be of interest replacing because it keeps freezing under the road. So again, these three tables represent three different scopes of work and that's why you see the first line of the table with total project cost varies in each of these tables. So then each table represents also four separate funding scenarios. There's three programs, three funding programs that we would probably pursue for funding. One is USDA Rural Development, the one that funded the study. The other is EFC, who has grants and loans. And then the last being CDBG, that's Community Development Block Grant. And that would be a grant. So to walk you down the first funding scenario, we'll start with the, the furthest left column that has cost mm -hmm. on the top table. It's titled RD Loan Only. So this represents you receiving just a loan for the project, no grant. So the total base project is the um, blue on your map. Okay, so it's it's Main Street, um, from just up here past the office, from all I, the way down to Cedar Street. From Ashline, Street. Yep, from Ashline all the way down to Cedar Street. Including, including a short stand on Cedar and loop. To close a loop on Cedar Street. And then you'll notice a, a portion further out Main. Mill Street up the hill, um, almost to the little. And then there's one short little segment out on Elm. If you look out there, you'll see a little blue segment there. Blue trailers and uh, Walnut. So that blue represents the base project. And then you'll see a, a yellow portion on Main, up by Ashline, mm -hmm. that re represents an optional add-on. And then a red portion up by Willow, still Main Street, but up by Willow, that represents an optional add-on to the project. Okay, so those are the areas of water main replacement we're looking at. So back to that table with the cost. Um, the base project is a million eighty-three. Um, if you had to borrow that completely from rural development at one and a half percent interest for thirty-eight years, that had a total annual debt service of thirty-seven thousand four hundred seven. So just doing that base project, that blue row shows you would have a user cost increase annually of $58. So that represents a typical single family household, one EDU, an equivalent dwelling unit. The village has approximately 650 EDUs. So every property is equated to an EDU. And an EDU is supposed to be a typical single family household. It's, it's 637. Okay. Now if you added on that optional port, yellow portion, 
it would add another ten dollars annually per user and then if you added on the red portion another eleven dollars annually per user and if you did all three that would have a seventy nine dollar per year increase impact to your users per year. Yeah. So the second column, well, I should provide a little more explanation behind that RD loan only. So RD, loan, RD has um, eligibility criteria for grant based on your existing user rates. So they do a calculation of what they feel typical resident in the village of Champlain could afford for water. And in this case, they've advised us, you know, for estimating purposes, use 1.8% the median household income. The median household income is $37,000 and change. Um, they're still using 2010 census data. Um, and 1.8 times that's roughly $670 per year. Um, your user rates are closer to $400 per year. So in rural development's eyes, you could afford to take on as much loan as would increase your rates by $270 before they'll give you a penny of grant. Which with your user base, you could borrow close to $4 million before it would increase your user rates by $270. So on just a million dollar project, they're not gonna offer you any grant based on that criteria. So there are other grant programs. EFC has or administers the WIA grants, the Water Infrastructure Improvement Act grants. That has no eligibility criteria based on your user rates. It's based on your MHI. Your MHI is low enough, you qualify for that grant from the financial standpoint. What they will look at is how you qualify from a technical standpoint as well. It's, it's a little more subjective. Um, there is a point system similar to EFC's normal grants. So EFC administers their loans, their own grants, and then these WIA grants. EFC's own grants, what they call their hardship grants, are run very strictly by your point score. So you are awarded points based on how bad your problems are. But they're geared more toward treatment problems. You don't get that many points for replacing problematic water mains. For example, um, this last year you had to score at least 95 points to be eligible for your hardship grants. If you have a treatment violation with a health department, you get 100 points automatically. Okay, for replacing the aged water mains, it's like 20 points. So you probably won't reach that 95 point threshold. But we up. Uh, does not follow that same strict adherence to the points. They start at the top with points, but they will skip projects to find a community that's ready to move forward with a project. So they do require you to take some of the preliminary steps for your project. They require you to do um, seeker and bond resolution before you even apply, which are steps you'll have to take for the project anyway. They just want to know that the applicant is serious enough before they start considering you for grant. So we ran a scenario of getting a WIA grant with whatever's left covered in a rural development loan. So that grant has a maximum of $3 million or 60% of your project cost, whichever's less. In this case, it's 60%. So a grant of $649,000. So I'm on that second column now of numbers. Mm -hmm with the balance of 433000 to be covered by a rural development loan. So that drops your debt service by more than half. Now it's down to 14962 So the cost increase to your users annually would be $23 for the base project. An additional $4 for the yellow optional add-on and another $4 for the optional add red add-on for a total of $32 per year per user, per EDU.
the the next the third column the only difference there is we're looking at an EFC loan versus a rural development loan there's not a ton of difference the rates are very similar the interest rates um, other than EFC goes with a 30-year loan versus a 38 being paying it off in a little shorter period of time which means your annual payments are a little higher and that results in the base project of $28 per year increase and then five for the yellow and five for the red optional add-ons, a total of 38. And then the fourth column contemplates getting a CDBG loan, Community Development Block Grant. That's administered through the Office of Community Renewal. They have up to $1 million grants, and they have no local match requirements. So we would anticipate maxing that out which would leave only 83000 left in loan. And in this case, we showed it with the FC. You could do that with the FC or rural development. It really wouldn't matter either way. Other than there would be a slight difference in you know, the loan payments because of the different terms. I'm just saying you would have the option of doing either. Mm -hmm. The annual debt service in that case drops to only $3,497 per year. And it will only result in an increase in user rates of $5. What's our eligibility for that one? So, <laughs> um, starting back with rural development, I'll just recap them all. Rural development has rolling application acceptance. All year round, you can submit rural development loan application or grant application. Um, EFC, um, you have to submit for their loan by August. Their WIA grant deadline last year was the second weekend in September. However, those haven't been announced yet this year. As you can imagine, the coronavirus has thrown all the funding programs um, into a tailspin. They haven't announced anything yet. Not CFAs, not the WIA grants. None of those programs have been announced. Um, and then with CDBG, their application is under the umbrella of CFAs. Haven't been announced. Yet. And you would have to do an income survey. Now, whether or not Office of Community Renewal would allow you to do a survey for just those streets or for the whole village um, would have to be determined by them. They're going to have to tell us um, what would be acceptable. Um, the only reason I bring that up is because um, Candace from RCAP, uh, who I think assisted you early on with um, the some of the, with the RFP for the water study, um, suggested that you could just survey those streets. My only concern is, I mean, whatever's left for the loan to pay for this project is going to be spread over the entire village. So I think it, it might be a tough argument to say, well, we should only survey these particular streets for the grant to save yourself the problem of surveying the whole village. Um, when you're going to turn around and spread the cost for the loan over the whole village. So who's benefiting from it? Just these streets or the whole village? I, I think you might run into a problem there, but the only way to get clarification is to ask mm -hmm. the Office of Community Renewal. But if you have to survey the whole village, um, <coughs> our cap will do it um, if you can get them and if they're available. Um, and they're just one representative for the whole state. So she may be able to do it, she may not. You may not want her to do it, that's totally your call. Um, there are private consultants that do it, third party. Um, and their price for the village would probably range between 10 and 20 grand. Just to throw a number out for you. Um, you would not be able to make this year's CFA deadline. Um, probably under any circumstance of delay of CFAs this year, because that income survey could take months and months and months. Um, so, so you'd be looking at a 2021 application for that program if you so choose to pursue it. And you would need a good portion of that time just to get the income survey completed. You can't use a census? So they do use the census. Um, well, 
We take that back. So the U.S. Census stopped taking income information in the 2000 Census. 2010, no income information was collected in the actual census. What they do now is they use information off the American Community Survey, um, and you can look that up online. So they do um, sampling every year of every community. I don't know how much sampling they do because I've never gotten a call in 10 years for it. I don't know if anybody else has. I think the sampling's pretty limited, and I've seen some of the results pretty flawed. Um, based on just what I know about certain communities and what their income levels are, it depends on who picks up the phone and actually answers the call. You know, whether it's the, the doctor in town or someone else, <laughs> you know. Um, but based on, I'd have to look up to see what year they're using now. Because it, they're using like the 2000, I can't remember, 17 or 18, maybe even as recent as the 19th, I'm not sure. American Community Survey information, and you have to have at least 51% of your population in the low to moderate income range, and they consider that to be less than 80% of what the statewide MHI is. So you have to have at least 51% in the low to mod, and based on the year income survey they're using, you're at 50.0%. You're just under pre-qualified. So in order to, to qualify, if you're not pre-qualified from that, you, you'd have to do an income survey. And then there's no guarantee that the results of the income survey will qualify. You. Right. So there's ten twenty thousand dollars right. flushed down the sewer. Yeah. 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 Well, so I think uh, you know the rural development application, um, the EFC loan application, are no-brainers. We should just submit those as a matter of course. Um, the WIA grant I think is your most probable grant, um, and to qualify for that, like I said, you'd have to do seeker and bond resolution. If somehow they keep that deadline on track for mid-September you would need to get the ball rolling now. Um, so, the seeker process, just to refresh your memory, um, starts with filling out part one of the environmental assessment form. And then the board declaring yourself, your, declaring your intent to be the lead agency for the process. Then you have to send the part one you completed um, out to other involved agencies. So in part one, you identify who's a potential involved agency. The project's going to happen in the state right away. DOT's an involved agency. It's a water line, so the Department of Health is an involved agency. These funding agencies will be involved agencies. You have to send them a letter expressing your intent, and then they are supposed to respond within 30 days whether or not they concur with you being lead agency. They will. They always do. However, some drag their feet and use their whole 30 days. We can try to push them and try to get it back in five or 10 days. As Soon as you have it back, or 30 days if they don't respond at all, you can be lead agency. Then you complete parts two and three of the environmental assessment form and do a negative declaration of environmental impact and then bond resolution. So the steps are, you have to, at a board meeting, declare your intent to be lead agent. The very next day, we send out the involved agency letters. As soon as they come back, you can ha schedule your next board meeting. We'll complete parts two and three for you. So you have them for that meeting. You agree with all the answers we provide. Then, at that second board meeting, you do your negative declaration and pass your bond resolution that same meeting then you have to wait 30 days after the bond resolution to print your estoppel notice. And that has to be in for 20 days. Or 20 days after that, um, officially you can take out your bond. So how long will this whole process take? From the time you start your first meeting, um, you know, you're probably talking 10 to 15 to 20 days maybe before you can schedule your before you can have your second meeting. 
to give enough time for those involved agency letters to go out, then to respond, and then have enough days advance notice to hold a board meeting. Um, and then 30 days after that for the bond resolution period to expire, and then 20 days after that for a stop and notice. So, I mean, you're talking roughly two months. So if you had a special board meeting before the end of July to do the first one, then by um, you know, mid-late September, you would be through the process in order to apply for LEO. Now, they have allowed us to submit applications, um, and we were open about this with the, with the FC for the WIA grant without the estoppel period over with. So that last 20 days, they can be flexible on if that hasn't fully expired. They just want a copy of the actual bond resolution. So you could make this year's WIA grant deadline if it's about the time period it normally is. We don't know when it's going to be, to be honest with you. It might still be mid-September. It might get pushed back to October. They may not have any this year. I honestly don't know. But if you wanted to be as prepared as possible, that would be the track to get on. Otherwise, you're waiting for 2021 right. WIAs, which would be September 2021, to I, apply. I should add that I asked Matt to do one additional uh, project cost for us. I asked him if he could come up with uh, a project cost on Main Street, Route 9, from Ashland to Blue Line all the way down to Cedar only. To, to the river crossing, basically, river without crossing. doing the extension. Not the, not the uh, turn on Cedar, not the upper part by Willow, and not the lower part by Elm. So reduce the base project size. Because we know that that's the, the most desperate section, and I think we need to know what that cost would be if we decide to go with something a little bit smaller. Yeah, we got 35 bands in that stretch. And he's, yeah, Only and he said he would. For now. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's no problem. Still, yeah, still fun. I'm not done yet. <clears throat> So what we would do with, in case there's still a little bit of uncertain, let, so let's say you want to try to apply for WIA this year and you want to take the step starting in July to get through the secret. Um, that may be the next opportunity we're together for you to decide what's, you know, what base project and additional add-ons you want to tackle. Um, so for the seeker, we would probably clear all of them. For the environmental review, mm -hmm. not knowing exactly at that point. So, but before you do the bond resolution, we would need to know how big of a project you do want to take on. The base, add-on one, add-on two, or add-on three. Yep. But for the seeker, we would just clear them all. Okay. You can always reduce the size of your project from the seeker. You can't go bigger. What about grant wise if you if this modified base, the small base to some main is, is So the WIA grant is sixty percent. So they'll still cover that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, these these four scenarios mm -hmm. would all still be in play if you reduce the base size of the project. So um, for the WIA grant it would just mean sixty percent of a smaller for a project cost. Mm -hmm. For the CDBG um, you would get to the point where it could be a 100% grant. So Correct. if you reduce the base project to 700000 you could potentially get a $700,000 CDBG grant. Yeah. But that's just a But, you know, CDBGs are pretty um, competitive. And you got to get, first of all, get to the point where you can even qualify to apply through the income survey. Now, WIA's grants can cover project costs retroactively. So, I'm just to throw this out there just so you understand all the options. If, you know, out of urgency, you wanted to get started with a project with just a loan in hand, you could, and then continue to apply for the WIA, and the WIA grant can cover costs retroactively. You can go back, as long as the construction's not 100% finished. CDBG does not allow that. 
and they are very strict about that, that they will not cover a single penny prior to you getting their grant award. So, I mean, just in case, you know, it becomes catastrophic and there's just no fixing anything anymore. You've got bands on top of bands on top of bands on the water main. That's what it is. Questions from the board? So for for action items from a decision making standpoint, um, you'd have to decide what scope of project. This scope, this scope, or this scope. Um, and then you know once we revise the numbers for next month or, or for your next board meeting, you will have to decide, you know, base project. Add on one, add on two, and add on three. Um, I guess the only thing that, uh, if you wanted to act on it, that you would actually have to take action on right now would be whether or not you want to start seeker um, as soon as possible, which would probably require a special board meeting to get it on track to be done by September, by some time in September. It's entirely up to you. Right. Without us knowing that we have any chance of getting any of these in an economy that is tanking. Well, this is what I would anticipate um, because we're having funny conversations with communities across the state. Is I could see, I we can all see probable short-term impacts with funding. In fact, to we have grants that some communities have in hand already that they're actually paying for the projects for, the state has stopped distribution of the grant. And the state's not paying much of anything right now. So there are some immediate impacts. And there may be delays with CFAs this year. They may not have many of the CFAs. Um, they may skip a funding round this year completely. But what we would ant anticipate is probably um, a surge in infrastructure funding sometime in the next year. Uh, I think it's inevitable that the federal government's going to pass an infrastructure bill. Will it be a trillion, two trillion, three trillion? I don't know. Um, Where are they going to get that money from? They'll keep printing it like they did the last two trillion. Yeah. Exactly. I, I, I think that's the one thing both political parties will agree on. And they'll both try to sell it that it was their idea. and. It'll be just like the stimulus funding after the recession. So, I think I think you want to keep your project in in the mix for funding consideration. Which you know, get the R D application in, get the E F C um, loan application in. Um, but both know. of those, you said we have very minimal chance of getting. Those two loans? Yes. Oh, you, you'll get one of those, or both of those loans. No, they're, they're happy to hand out loan money. Oh, yeah. It's the two grants, the WIA grant and the CDB, CDBG grant, that are the more competitive ones. Um, the WIA you can't apply for without secret bond resolution. You have to do those. The seeker's in our contract with you to do for you. It's just how soon do you want to get it started. You want to get it started to be able to apply for WIAs if they're available this year. That's our. That's something you've already hired us to do. But we can have a special board meeting in a couple of weeks. I, mean, I don't think we're ready to make any kind of decisions right now. Plus, we want the information about the shortening. Mm -hmm. Neither way, you need to be seen. And and they're and they're going to do it for us anyway. You want do you want to do the secret tonight in terms of stating the, our intentions? Well, if you want to pass Seeker, we need to complete Part 1 for you. Right. So, you, you can't do your um, intent to be lead agency without a completed Part 1 in front of you. So, so, I guess what I'd be looking for for direction from the board is, yes, we'd like to get started. Please have Part 1 for us done by this specific date. We're going to have a board meeting. Since you've already contracted with us to do Correct. Right. So then I think, yeah, but I think we should tell you maybe part one. Mm -hmm. I don't know what a specific date would be, though. That would take some figuring out. Okay. Before August 1st. Yes, before August 1st. 
Can I can I just get back to you with that, Matt? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Tomorrow? Yep. All right. Yep. Absolutely. You know, the CDBG one, you've got time to think about it. Um, that's really a long time. Again, you're not, there's no way you're going to make an application deadline for, for this year, regardless of whatever date they push back CFAs to. Just the income survey is going to be too big to tackle um, to get it done this year. Um, so, I mean, take some time to think about that. Yeah. You may want to have a call with Office of Community Renewal and say, this is our project, this is what we're thinking about doing. What do you think? Charlie Fillion is the contact there. Oh, that's Candace's connection. <laughs> she would have talked to Charlie, yeah. 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 No comment. Okay, so we'll we'll figure out a date and I'll I'll give you a call. Okay. How much time do you need? We can do part one probably within a week's time. Okay. I'm, I'm available straight till the 30th. Yeah, I'm yeah, I, I, I just look really for 27. I have to check my phone. I don't have it right here. So. But you can get back to me. I'll get back to you. We'll figure that out soon. So I kind of covered a lot of things. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to. Try to answer those to the best of my ability. Well, thank you for laying it out so clearly. Anything else for me this evening? Any other questions, anyone? No. All right. Thanks. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Uh, the Champlain Farmers Market will begin on Saturday, July 18th from 9 a.m. until noon and run every Saturday until mid-September in Pocket Park. Please support our local vendors by purchasing their produce and other handcrafted items. We are having some problems with four wheelers, both on the village streets and on the rack trail. They are creating excessive noise and unsafe conditions for themselves and their neighbors. In addition, there has been damage to the bridge and the path on the rack trail. I understand that four wheelers are fun and popular. I get that. But they must be used responsibly in permitted areas. If you, any residents, are having issues with this problem, please contact law enforcement. We intend to pursue these, uh, those who are damaging the Northern Tour Rep Trail. As many of you have probably noticed, our Department of Public Works is preparing road shoulders for upcoming paving and reestablishing ditches, some of which haven't had attention for years. I, I will keep residents informed as to which streets are being worked on through our village Facebook page. If you do have a question or a concern regarding village work, I request that you call the office for information rather than griping about it on social media. It is most helpful to have the facts before speculation is posted. All of our employees are dedicated to doing the best job possible here. And when their work is criticized publicly without the correct information, it is discouraging and unfair. May you stay cool and healthy throughout this scorcher of a summer. Wear a mask, stay six feet apart, look out for one another. Let us continue to move forward together. Report from the trustees. Thank you. Um, our, our group did a wonderful job down there on the map. It was so much quicker than we expected. Yeah. Yeah. It went really fast. It was about two hours, maybe. Maybe? Uh, two, yeah, two and a half hours. Um, and everyone was helped were right into helping. If like we didn't have to tell anyone what to do, they would go right in and knew exactly what to do. And mm -hmm. The worst part was putting the stencils down. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the wind was blowing, but we got it down, and yeah, it looks great. Um, and the only other thing I've done are virtual fun runs, and we've had three already, two in June and one so far in July. Um, the first couple I've had three families, um, and this last one, so far we've only had one family participate. And they just put their picture of the kids running online at their time. And, you know, and every every time there's a different team. So the school called one, this last one is where I got blue, so they have their whole staff on mm -hmm. mm -hmm. we've, we've got some participation, not as expected, you know, not as many as we expect. But, you know, we what we can do. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for all that you're doing. Okay. So the volleyball nets were ordered and the two pieces of equipment were ordered and we have enough money to uh, pay for some of the ground stuff underneath the playground for safety. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, that's good. Um, on a note, not for the village, but for all those interested, as of this Wednesday, visitation will begin in nursing homes. It's extremely, extremely strict, and each facility has to have a plan approved by DOH before Wednesday. For the day, there's only going to be 10% of the residents allowed to have visitors, so it's going to be very, very minimal, and there is no visitation whatsoever if there has been any case of COVID in the building. So we do have a few facilities that will be excluded from opening as of Wednesday. Um, and ombudsmen are back in starting Wednesday. So 
you know, it's all new. We'll see. This came out at 3 o'clock on Friday uh, evening um, with no notice to anybody um, that this was coming. No notice to the ombudsman office at all. So, you know, everybody's scrambling over the weekend trying to come up with a plan. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be very interesting. I, I don't know how they're going to monitor all of this without stirring people's blood even more. So please be patient with it. Everyone is trying. They're trying to keep all your loved ones safe. Um, and it's not to be vindictive and to keep you away because you can watch in there and lead you in there for your loved ones. But any questions, you can, you can reach out to the facility or to myself at any time um, for more answers to that. Thank you for the important job you're doing, Amy. Kim? Um, the only thing that I have to report on is the Champlain Water Board. Um, a letter was sent to the village of Champlain. I kind of thought we'd have that in our correspondence tonight. Um, it was sent to Mary Petrogen, the Board of Trustees, with a copy of the initiatives and timelines that the Water Board has come up with. Um, on the same day that it was delivered here to this office by myself, it was also delivered one to Sarah Bagno at the town of Champlain. Um, Do you want me to make copies right now? Uh, that would be great because I think everybody really needs I to be looking at this. I've got it right on my desk. I didn't yeah, realize that it hadn't been distributed to everybody. I thought that was all the right way. Right? No, I, I thought you'd put them in the boxes. Mm -hmm. No, I left that up to the girls to put on the agenda. And, um, but everybody does need to look at this. It does have, um, I can read the letter to you. I can. Okay, it says, Dear Mayor, Ms. Fetcher, Gen Board of Trustees, please find and close the Water Board's initiatives and timelines, clearly defining the requirements of all parties so the Water Board can efficiently meet their required deadlines as per, as per the IMA dated November 25th, 2019. And it's by um, all five members of the water board. So the town has theirs as well. We have been diligently working on this. This portion of it right here to come up with the requirements has been more than time consuming. We have spent an enormous amount of time just getting to this point. Um, and we will be you know, before we know it, the deadlines are, are going to be fast approaching, so we need to be moving forward with this as soon as possible. Um, we, you know, the, town's, the town has a set of that, uh, timelines as well as does the water board with getting their information in. So, um, if you have any questions, you can reach out to us, um, send us an email, give us a call.
tentatively we're looking to meet again with the water board on the 24th um, of July. Okay. So, so are you looking for last year's like? No, you know, the way you have your, your dates, like September 15th, December 15th, mm -hmm. which we had already discussed. So you are you looking at those quarters for last year? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need all of that. The last fiscal year is data for, for what this year is. You know, uh, I know, but when you were in here discussing this, we weren't, we, we, it wasn't discussed that we were supposed to get this information for we last were year. For, we were yeah, projecting four. Yeah, we're projecting well, four and not for last year's. But if that's what you're looking for, then... Well, so the one we've been working on is from mm -hmm. the previous year, in 2018-19. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Remember we talked about that? I said, this is, this is great. To, we're getting this laid out, but the data itself is already falling behind. The part is ahead of that data the IMA wasn't signed until this past year. So that work was trying to lay out how how to provide the data to us. And I remember telling you that, well, once we're completed with that, then we've got to plug in the data for the next fiscal year because now we're up to the point. So now you're looking for 1920. 1920, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we can finish the 18, 19 you're working on because I don't want to just toss that away. It's great information. But the one that we need for a report is the 19 or 20 year. Okay. I understand what you're saying, but I don't think it was clear the other day when we were discussing the dates and, you know, the different fiscal years. I think Juanita and I were thinking that we were talking about these going forward. Going forward. Well, that, when you that, said we were well, waiting for everything I know, but if, but if you think about that, then we can't do a report for next year. I know. I understand that. But I'm just saying I don't think that we understood exactly what we were requesting. Well, that was the reason for this, was to, you know, to let you know that our our report is due on October 1st. And basically, it's the previous year. We're off, we'll be off by a year. Yeah, you, have, you have to look back a year. You have to. I mean, it's only you can determine what the next year's water rate, water rate recommendations would be, or the uh, to go to the town for the uh, for the So, so going forward on September fifteenth, it will be the previous three months that you're looking at. But right now, you want all of the data for the previous year, correct? To get caught up, yes. To get caught up. Get caught up, and then we're going to start the twenty twenty one data in September. Okay. So you can do that, right, the previous year? Yeah, from July one until current. Okay. The, the reason is they were 15, so it's in there, in the office, we thought we'd give at least two weeks leeway following the closing of that quarter. Yeah. And then one just to add was that the fiscal year quarters and the water billing quarters are not the same. So yeah, that adds a lot of confusion. That, added, no. that added confusion to it. All right, I understand it now. So thank you. And that's a great question. Do we have to do that? Do we have to go on a calendar year and then base all of our? Well, it would be hard to change that. It wouldn't be. Would or would be. I think it would be. It would be. Because then you'd want to do it for according to our fiscal year, which I think would be. <laughs> it changes it by a month. You could do that. But it would be confusing. The first, the first one would be short. So it's probably easier to go the year calendar year than it would be fiscal year. I don't know why the a village fiscal year has to start in June. And a town start in January. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And some people start um, July 1st. 
So right, and there's the July first. Yeah. So you know, it's you know, as soon as we thought if we were to switch our billing to our fiscal year, it would balance that out and make the data a lot. My work we can do that too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it just changes a bunch of things. That's so, true. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. All right. Yes. Any more to add to your report? From my report? Yes. Yeah. I just wanted to report on um, one the blood drive we had on the 29th of June was success, very successful. Um, there was uh, 29 total, 26 successful donations. So I'm going to stay teamed up with the EMS mm -hmm. and we're going to remain at the end of the station. It's working. I don't know. It's not broken and fix it. So I just wanted to let, let you know that. And we are working at, we have, we're scheduled for the 16th. Uh, Clark and I are going to start assembling the launch and the box. Um, I think if you know of someone else that's handy in the village, I've asked Joe Ashland, but that happens to be a way that will be working. So he might be able to do that. And I think on a weekend day. So. You know somebody else. I think three of us will be coming. So, mm -hmm. so Mike's going to get stuff laid out for us a bit ahead of time. We'll bring the skids over and put them in the terminal. Mm -hmm. Thursday? Yeah, it's a Thursday. It's Thursday morning. Mm -hmm. It's a tough time of year. It's Thursday. What time are you doing it? Uh, yeah. Thursday, Thursday. Thursday, Thursday. I think it was 8.30. Yeah, 8.30, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I can show you a couple. Okay, thank you. Anything else, Tom? No, nope, that's all. All right, thank you. Report from the Cliff Treasurer. Um, we had a water and sewer billing. Water was 63,704 and sewer was 65,557.96. transfer first from um, A1990.4, which is contingent, for $835 to to A1420.4, which is general code. Um, we got new code books. Um, yeah. yeah, and that's what only two. Huh? Mm -hmm. Sorry. And we, we did two. We come back. It's going to get some printed by the county. Crazy. Uh, but we did have two additions, so we had to, they charge you for those, mm -hmm. and then, then we had to have them, they don't do the small ones, so we had to get the bigger books. And we did all the updates. Yeah, it is, it is great to have it all the way. Mm -hmm. um, we may have a motion for that transfer. A big motion to transfer from P1990.4, $835 to A1420.11. Any second? Any second. Did you say A45 or A35? A35. Okay, I thought you said 45 and I wrote down 35. So. Yeah. It's probably nice. Is that mask? <laughs> <laughs> it is a little. Well, you do. You're a little. It is. It's, it's, there's a big bubble to it. Yeah. Big difference. Any discussion on this motion? Roll call. Trustee Molenski. Trustee Carrick. Aye. Trustee Trombley. Aye. Trustee Trombley. Aye. <laughs> Mayor Aye. I'm never early in the call. <laughs> 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 
Um, we have additional invoices to add to the warrant for $1,275.40 for a total warrant of $19,265.70. Motion to approve the warrant. So moved. Mm -hmm. Got a second? Second. Okay. Discussion? Questions? Yeah, a couple questions. Sure. So, um, the expenditure for Village Fest, is that the playground equipment? Correct. Yep. It was, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I assume. Um, so I didn't make a transfer for that one because Jana has spoke to um, the health department. Health department. And we should be getting it recovered by the end of the month. Okay. Yeah. They said it takes two weeks and it's in the process. So. It's fine. Um, the outdoor uh, decor, I'm assuming, is that for the three new Christmas decorations? Oh, they're for Christmas decorations. Okay. What did we get? Tree, a candle, and this. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We got the number of how many pounds you want. We got the yeah, to switch to so. Other questions? Yep, one more. Okay. All right. Um, and, and it just could be my brain is mush, but the uh, Canal Street water plant, the electric, is that normal? Or are we a little high there? It seems high to me, but. I didn't have the old one to look at. Yeah, 35 to 35. There's two. It was 7.04 last month. Are we tending to be higher in that? I didn't recall it being in the 700, so I just was like, wow. The new water plant is costing more than what Yeah. Yeah. I will, I will send you the um, permit for the year of what it costs is for each. Because I do have it on my computer. Oh, that's good. That'd be nice. Yeah. It's Get a lot more horsepower there for filtration yeah. and. Well, I just was wondering if we are using a lot more water with that. Well, we, we did flushing. Cold. We did flushing in that too, so we had a lot more. Plus, we had Correct. five breaks in eight days. Mm -hmm. Four and eight. We had five breaks, so we lost not a lot there. We did lose a little bit. Caught them right away, so that's that's one water. <laughs> not really a treat. You know, we caught it right away, so we didn't lose a terrible amount. But we do spend a lot of electricity, you know. Well, you got I mean, you got 50 horse motors there now. It's a question of filtration. You know, it's, it's yeah. a lot more. But I mean, overall, overall. Oh yeah. The wastewater treatment plant is very expensive. It's a lot. I'm hoping when we get. The streetlight swapped out to get a little bit of a savings, but it's been a lot. And I think that'll be small compared to the plan. I know. I know. It's just hard to find ways to uh, to save. It's like a solar plan. Yeah. And the new blowers, it was going to be less, but. I don't think we're going to save it. You know? Save it's going to be less. Um, and then the community beautification. We spent thirty-four eighty-two. Almost the whole budget. What was coming out of that? Mm -hmm. oh, oh, we had to do the launch. Yeah, that's part of the launch. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I knew I had to something with them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And are yeah. we going to move things into that, or is it considered beautification? That's the right count, probably. Is there some sub subcategories in there? Okay. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah, we got to be separated. I think that's all I had. That's it for me. Okay. Roll call. Trustee Lewinsky. Aye. Trustee Trombley. Aye. Trustee Trombley. Aye. Trustee Garrett. Aye. Member Fetcher. Aye.
shoulders ditching, trying to get ready for paving. Um, South Street, the north side of South Street, or the west side of, uh, of Route 9 of South Street is ready to go. Um, machine way, I got a few stones to dig out of the roadway. We're working on prospect right now. Um, the town's supposed to come up this week with a grader and help me cut shoulders on uh, prospect. And we try to widen it a little bit on sides, um, especially one side. It's pretty near on that road. Um, we've, had a, we've had a few complaints, not terrible, but uh, some people don't like their drafts going up, but I do what it is, I can't get it ready to, to pay me, so. Um, I've got a water and sewer, uh, water and sewer has to be installed uh, before our paving, and I don't know if I'm going to have time to do this, this is one on Cedar Street, it's been since a year or so ago, still not done. Um, the road is still cut out. I don't know when I'm gonna. I don't know when I'm gonna be able to do this, but we'll have to look at it as, as it goes on here. Uh, right now, it's mostly getting roads ready. Um, it's, I gotta follow up, but it's looking right now that beginning of August probably gonna be here to pay. So that only gives a few weeks. Um, other than that, I've got a partial list of stuff that I'm trying to complete. I've got DI drains rebuild. Um, some of them going to be racing road bikes. I've got one, on, one or two on Church Street that are starting to collapse. We've got a bunch of passion to do in bad areas. Uh, we've still got a lot to shoulder roads with stone after uh, after paving is done. We've still got sidewalk and curb replacement. Um, we've got a water service up on Main Street that freezes every winter that I've got to retap and, and uh, repair the service. Um, Sewer plant, we probably we've got weeks of work there. We've got to empty the tanks, we've got a broken airline, we still got to change, we've got three tanks to suck out with the back truck, replace all the fine bundle diffusers. We've got a hole in one of the tanks, so one's leaking to another, but it's got to be patched. Um, and I want them to get going on scraping and painting some of the piping. We still got to uh, remove the old generator at the water plant. I'm gonna to have to put in a retaining wall or a 12 inch thick pad for the new generator once that, uh, once that comes in. Um, ditching and culvert installations, I still gotta, I still gotta finish. I started early on, on Oak Street, but we're not done up there. I still got ditching and stone placement on the bike path. Um, we've got trimming of trees and some tree removal and in some areas and by the sidewalks and streets. And uh, of course I'll have flushing again to do this fall. So I have to get a full I'm going to have to keep it going until next year. <laughs> um, other than that, mostly right now it's, it's streets. Trying to get streets ready for for paving. Because if we miss it, we're done for another year or so. Um, I've got a few, I don't know, I think I had sent Janet and Nina, I think they forwarded it on. For the, I've got a few requests. One is the, the generator for the water plant. We had um, we had approved. We had a we have the old generator and the old generator tank down there. Um, the old generator tank is pretty much outdated. Um, I, I did ask um, the generator company about um, tank sizing, and they do make a tank that's twice the size that would give us uh, a minimum of 48 hours of runtime versus a 24-hour runtime, uh, an upcharge for that would be $1,300. Um, we should get more than 48, only because it's not going to run 24-7 at full load, full load right? Um, but with this generator, too, like our other ones, there every week they run for so long, so this will cut down our our time as far as having to haul fuel there. You know, it will give us a little bit more, uh, a little bit more space in between. What we'll do is the, the old tank that was there, that is there now, we'll end up 
you know, pumping it out. Once it's empty, then we can remove it. But if we have to change that tank, the tank with a dike uh, around it, the containment, and it's not, um, it's not up to, it's not up to code. There's no alarms, there's no anything on it. It's just a tank with a tank. So eventually that would have to be replaced. So while we're doing the new generator, I think it's, it would be beneficial to get the larger tank. It doesn't change your footprint, it's just taller. Mm -hmm. it, raises, it raises the height up, which, uh, I mean, the pad's still going to be the same. Uh, again, we're a 12 foot by a 4 and a half foot pad, 12 inches thick, for a generator. So I'm, uh, I'm going to ask the board if it's, they would entertain spending an extra 1300 to double the size of the tank on, the, uh, on that generator. It would, it would go from a 288 gallon to a 583 gallon tank. Yeah,
which is the one locally at $190,000, $9.90. Um, one, because it's local, and two, because it's close. How long does this darn thing last us? Mm -hmm. $90,000. Yeah. But at least, I mean, you do, so. yeah. it's a lot of money, but at least we, we protected. Yes. Mm -hmm. I know. Yes, I'll have to Yeah. We won't get it until next spring. That's right. Probably some young boxes in the back up to like April next year. Colvin probably not in the back. Plus, uh, the dealer knows every new doctor on trials. So, so maybe, maybe it'll come quicker. It's going to get it over. It's going to get it. Huh? Maybe it will come quicker. The truck can be here, mm -hmm. but it's the, it's the box and the file. So, maybe that's the process. They yeah. were booked out the leaf <laughs> rope. We'll see. Once they, once we, I got to go on OGS and say we accept. Once they get the PO, then they can hold us a spot. Okay. They can't hold us a spot until they get the PO. Okay. So that's all I have. Any other questions about this motion here? Any other comments on the uh, bill copies? Trustee McCutcheon. Trustee McCutcheon. Trustee Malinsky? Aye. Trustee Trouble. Aye. Trustee Trouble. Aye. Trustee Garrett? Aye. Mayor McCutcheon? Aye. All right. Come on. <laughs> Uh, correspondence. Uh, correspondence from New York State DOT regarding chips funding and correspondence from Northern Tier Housing Donation. Oh, that's um. Correspondence from Stacy Lucas regarding water and sewer adjustments. Oh, I was I was going to put that on. Well, okay, that's right. Yeah. I think you didn't put it today yeah. or something. I'm just going to add that in the business. Um, I, for correspondence, I just want to say um, you probably all noticed that the states are reserving the right to reduce that by 20 percent on the chips. Mm -hmm. And um, i and I'd like to make a public statement thanking Northern Tier Housing for their generous donation of two thousand dollars. A great partnership, I think, that we have with them. Mm -hmm. New business. Resolution of polling place and time. Let me read this resolution. A resolution polling place and time 2020 elections for Village of Champlain, whereas the next village elections for offices of the Village of Champlain, New York, will be held on September 15, 2020 and whereas the Board of Trustees of said village must designate by resolution the polling place and hours which the polls shall be open per section 15-104-3B of the State of New York election law. Then be it therefore resolved that the Board of Trustees of the Village of Champlain has determined the polling place shall be at the Village of Champlain office 11104-89 Champlain, New York, with the polls being open from 12 p.m. to 9 p.m. and be it further resolved that as required by section 15-104-3b of the state election law, notice of said village polling place and time the polls will be open be, will be open be given at least 60 days prior to said election date. This resolution shall take effect immediately. And I have a motion. So moved. Okay. And a second. Roll we'll call. Trustee Malinsky, Trustee Trombley, Trustee Trombley, Trustee Garrick, it has Mayor Martin. Yeah. Oh, I'm so it's sorry. Oh, I want to see you. So Mayor McFetrich, I can't oh, call you Trustee Malinsky. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, that's my bad. Teach. I'm sorry. That's okay. It's, it's, it's fine. It's good. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, motion carries. Uh, uh, Matt, uh, Matt was already here. Um, Tom and Kim, 
Is it appropriate to read uh, number three? Because I heard that there might be a question on that. Um, I called the office um, and spoke with someone in the office. Mm -hmm. John and Heather are on vacation. They were going to try to reach them. Mm -hmm. It was Tom's understanding that the way it is written is correct yeah. and accurate. Okay. I just, for my own comfort, wanted to call and just double check, but I don't know if he didn't reach them. They haven't called back, so I could wait a month. Because she was supposed to be, she was hoping to be back this week because we have a meeting last meeting on Thursday, and she was hoping to be have it have her COVID test and results back before then. So well, I don't want to make any mistakes, and I don't want to push anything that might not. Mm -hmm. I, so I, I think let's wait. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm All right. We're going to table that. Okay. Yep. Okay. I feel more comfortable. Okay. With that. I feel. Yeah. I do too. Um, the uh, the volleyball net purchase has not been um, approved. Oh. Um, so we're going to do that. Okay. Right now. Um, the cost of that volleyball net. Uh, purchase is nine hundred and thirty nine hundred dollars and thirty-five cents. So I need a motion to approve that purchase. For more. And a second. Okay. All right. Any discussion? You know this has been covered by one of the grants that we mm -hmm. got. All right, four copies. Trustee Goldstein. Trustee Trombley. Aye. Trustee Trombley. Aye. Trustee Garrett. Aye. Mayor Petrich. Aye. I think she might have rolled her eyes at me. <laughs> <laughs> the generator we already discussed. Um, I just wanted to have a, a quick announcement that um, Juanita's insurance policy is going to change. It will be a slight increase to us but it keeps it more in line with the other policies uh, of the village employees. And I would also add that she opted to not join the union policy due to the expense to the village. So she is getting a different policy that's a, it's got a few changes, a little more expensive, but she opted out of the, joining the union one due to the expense to the village. Um, we have one water sewer adjustment request It was a hot water tank that moved and yeah. then, um, ran for five or six days. I went over and saw it. I went over and did a high water bill. No alarm. We just changed the hot water tank. It was leaking. I went down to pictures of it. They had a gas hot water, now they got electric. Because they can afford a power bed. But it's from a hot water tank. When I did the report, it was two, like 200 gallons an hour for like, six days. And they didn't notice that? I noticed they didn't have much hot water. Then when they went in the basement, the whole basement was flooded. Of course, there's dirt floor, so it all didn't go into the septic sewer, so. Mm -hmm. That would be a waste of water, but it's out of $105.66. Any other discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, we have nothing for old business. Does anyone have anything for old business? Alright. Thank you. Oh, eight o'clock. All in favor? Aye. Aye.